I think the DJI Pocket 3 could be a great studio camera, and I'm gonna prove it in this video. So before I put the Pocket 3 over there, there's a few settings that you should change to get the best video quality coming out of the camera. So let's do that now. So number one, you wanna put the camera in pro mode. So to do that, you simply swipe from the right here, and you'll see it says pro in the top right. I'm gonna press that, and then from here, there's a few more things that we wanna change. The first thing is the color profile. So I'm gonna tap that, and you'll get a few options here. You'll get normal, you'll get HLG, and you'll get D log M. And it's D log M that you want. This will make the footage look a little grayer, but this is so we can edit this in post a little bit later on. Then I'm gonna scroll down to image adjustment. I'm gonna click the custom, and I'm gonna make sure the sharpness is on minus two, and the noise reduction is on minus two as well. That's gonna get rid of that digital look. And then to get it as close as possible as our Sony camera, we want full control over the exposure. So to do that, if you go to exposure and then change it to M mode, this is gonna change it into manual. This means we can choose the one over 50 shutter speed, which gives us that kind of motion blur that we want so that the footage looks much more cinematic. Now to do this, you are gonna need an ND filter. And the ones I've got here are the Freewell ND filters. So I can put this onto the camera and then we can find the one that's best for this lighting situation. And then we've got full control over the camera. Now we've got that set up, let's put on the extension handle because this gives us the ability to connect this to the tripod. So for our studio, I think the Freewell ND8 looks best. Let's put this on. These magnetically attach to the camera. So now you are watching us on the DJI Pocket 3 and what do you think of the footage? I think this looks pretty good. The quality is really, really good for a camera of this size and this price. Now a couple of things you may notice here. Number one, this angle is a little bit wider than the Sony and that's because the Sony we're using a 24 millimeter lens and the Pocket 3 has a 20 millimeter lens. So you can counteract this by just moving closer or further away from the subject, but I think this looks pretty good. Now, some of you may be asking, why not just use auto? And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, firstly, we're gonna show you how we color grade this footage. You wanna use Pro because Pro will give you the manual settings to better match a proper mirrorless camera and you get a little bit more dynamic range if you shoot in log. However, auto is still pretty good. So let's switch over to auto now and you can check out how that looks. And now we have switched the camera to fully automatic mode. And you know what, this still looks really, really good. And if you're brand new to cameras, you can easily use this. There's really nothing wrong with it. I think it looks a little sharp and maybe a little bit too dark in places. So let's do a side by side. So you can see the difference between the auto mode and our color graded version in D log M. Okay, now we are back in the pro mode. And in a second, I'm gonna show you exactly what we do to fix and color grade this footage to get it looking like this. So we're now back in the edit and Lewis is working on grading this shot. So this is the shot here straight from the Pocket 3. And what we would usually do is get the official DJI LUT, LUT and pop that on first. That gives it a kind of a, a base correction to get you started. And for most people, it actually looks pretty good. There we go. So you can see already that helps with the color there. If we just flick that on and off, Lewis, just to show how that looks before and after, looks pretty good. And then what we do is we sometimes color grade that a little bit more, adjust the colors uh, to our liking, and then we even have our own studio light that we apply as well. It gives it a bit more of that teal and orange look. Oh, I think that's looking pretty good. But what did you think of the comparison? Did you prefer the auto or did you prefer the more cinematic looking pro version? Now, as I mentioned, there's a few reasons why you should always shoot in pro. Really, you will get better dynamic range. I think the image quality looks a little softer, which kind of makes it look 
a little bit more like a real camera. Now, we're gonna be doing a whole host of videos on the Pocket 3 because we're really enjoying it here, including 10 tips to get the best image quality out of your Pocket 3, as well as some tips and tricks that you may not know about. Now, if you wanna see the full review, you can watch that up here, and I'll see you in the next video.